Alright, good day YouTubers. Uncle Dave from DC's Adventures. Uh, today we're going to make a video on uh, on a subject that I get a lot of questions about and uh, I watch a lot of videos on on YouTube and uh, figured I'd finally post my own video on my EDC. This is my everyday carry. Um, my everyday carry kit is pretty intense. I've been carrying a kit like this since I was in high school and I am now almost 30. It uh, may seem almost like paranoia, but it's really just about being prepared. I uh, I just like to be prepared for anything that's going to happen during my day. And this is how it's been for a long time. Uh, I almost always carry a small backpack like what you see in front of you right now. There's a Nelgen bottle hooked onto it. Sometimes it'll be full, sometimes it'll be empty. It doesn't really matter to me. I just like to have... Uh, have the bottle itself on me so I can use it if I need to. I do live in Maine as you guys know and uh, when you're traveling through the woods and going even in a car and you're in the backwoods or you're in the back roads if your car breaks down you might have a long walk before you get to someone's house or before you get to a place with a service or before you get to the gas station and I, I do like to have a water bottle and a few items on me just in case. Uh, with this backpack, I also carry uh, a, a, a fleece jacket, always, no matter what time of the year it is. Even if I'm in a t-shirt, I carry a fleece jacket tucked onto my backpack or maybe in my backpack. Just because it does get cold here in Maine and uh, the weather is unpredictable here. It, you know, it could be a really nice day and then start raining and having a nice jacket really makes a difference. And if you do get stuck out somewhere, you're going to be glad you have that jacket to cover over with for the night. So with that said, before I break open the bag and show you, the main kit is in this bag. So I'm going to go over what I carry and put on my person every single morning as part of my prep. Every morning I put this on, unless I'm going to a wedding or wearing a suit for some reason, then I might not be carrying so much. I might just carry a pocket knife. Um, but for the most part, when I wake up in the morning, I put this gear on, okay? First of all, I wear boots, large hiking boots. I do wear these almost every single day. I usually don't wear sneakers. Uh, here in Maine, the weather's really wet and the ground's really wet, and it's better to just to have waterproof boots on. And these are the boots I hike in and walk in the most. They've broken in really well. When you have a pair of boots that are broken in really well, you know that you can trust. You can trust them in that you can walk. I can walk 10 to 15 miles in these boots a day without having any foot pain at all. So that's why I like wearing these boots, because I know I can rely on them. So over the last couple of years, I've found I wear my boots pretty much year-round. And uh, sometimes when it's really hot summer days and I'm going to the beach or something, I wear sneakers. But in general, I wear my boots, and I really enjoy wearing boots. Uh, a lot of people give me guff in my family and my friends for always having big boots on, but I just enjoy um, having something on my feet that I know I can really rely on. Second, every single day I put a large knife on me, a large survival knife. This is a pretty large knife to be carrying every single day. And I know a lot of guys might think this is ridiculous because you really do only need a good flip knife to get most things done. But, uh, yeah, again, I just am always ready to spend the night out in the woods if I need to. And a full-size knife really makes a difference and can really make you a lot more comfortable if you do have to spend the night out. Um, I always carry a handkerchief in my pocket right behind the knife so I can wipe my nose or if I'm taking something hot off of a fire I have something to uh, kind of glove it with and uh, it's just really handy having a handkerchief. There's lots of different things you can use it for. You can use it to pre-filter the water before you put it in your water bottle. You can use it for lots of things. Uh, you can also use it to break up and make char cloth if you, you know, find yourself making a friction fire and you know the second fire you're not going to want to make a friction fire. You'd rather just throw a spark on a piece of char cloth. Well, a 100% cotton bandana will make it easy to make char cloth. And then... Something most guys don't do is I do carry a weapon. I don't talk about it much on my channel. 
Uh, there's lots of guys who have gun channels out there, and uh, they have lots of information. Uh, Hickok 45, or uh, there's a couple other great ones out there, and you can get all the information on any caliber, or any gun that you want on YouTube. And uh, yeah, the thing about carrying a gun, I don't think it's for everybody. I carry a gun every single day. I have for the better part of 10 years. Every morning when I get up, I put a weapon on me. I think it's really messed up times right now, and the number one way to defend yourself is a gun. It has been for over a couple hundred years now. Uh, when you bump into a real problem, a real problem that you're going to need help with, one, the cops aren't going to show up until after your body is laying on the ground, and two, um, the person who's coming after you, the most likely thing that they're going to be carrying is a gun, because that is the most common and the best way to protect yourself these days so the criminals do the same things they'll be carrying a gun as well now if you drink a lot or you use drugs carrying a gun every day is probably not for you because uh... you won't be able to make the right decisions when it comes and uh... also on that point if you're gonna carry a gun every day you need to be trained thoroughly because you have to know when you can pull the trigger and when you can't. Because if you pull the trigger on someone, even if they pulled the gun on you already, you're going to court. And you're going to have a long court proceeding. You might go to jail eventually, even if you were in the right, you know? So that's something to consider. Because when you pull your gun, you know, just like all the stuff that's in the news right now with uh, the cop in Ferguson and, uh, you know... Um, Zimmerman trial and everything, it's like, when you pull your gun, you have to be pretty sure. You know, Zimmerman was pretty borderline, because I've always been trained that you don't pull a gun until you see a gun. You know, if someone's coming at you with a knife or another deadly weapon, and you know, okay, bodily harm's coming, it's time for me to pull my weapon. You, uh, you shouldn't shoot the person still, because, I mean... Even if they just have a knife or a bat or a club, they're probably going to drop it when you pull your weapon on them. So that's something to consider. I recommend if you guys want to carry a pistol to go out and get trained as much training as you humanly possibly can. So with that said, that's what I carry on my body. I, of course, put this big giant wallet in my pocket every single day too, which I have a couple fish hooks. I always keep a razor blade in there and I keep a couple uh, ounces of silver silver coins for trading purposes which now that's getting a little too preppy and maybe a little too paranoid but you know if something happens and it's a national d disaster and it's going down quick a couple pieces of silver will probably get you some loaf of bread or maybe uh, a bag of rice you know so I think it's good to have a little something you can trade always on you all right, with that said, that's everything for my person. Wear warm clothes. Wear clothes that are warm enough for your environment and that you're willing to spend the night in. That's obvious. Cody Lundin, you know, he wears his shorts, no shoes. But Cody Lundin does that for a reason. It's because Cody Lundin lives in Arizona, and every single day he's wearing shorts and T-shirt. He's not going to be wearing anything else. So he wants to train and train in his survival training to be ready in whatever he's usually wearing. So when he trains, he trains with no shoes and shorts on because that's what he's wearing every day. If he's taking a plane from Arizona to somewhere else, he's probably going to be wearing that. And if it happens to go down in the Netherlands, well, you know what? That's what he was wearing and that's what he would have been wearing. So that's what he trains in. So I'm, I'm with Cody 100% on what he does and the decisions he makes. I think he makes good decisions, and I think uh, he's well-trained and very well-equipped to what he has. And uh, no offense to Joe, but Cody knew what he was doing, and he still does. So hopefully we haven't been seeing much from Cody lately. He did write his uh, new book not too long ago. Uh, hopefully we see more from him. But anyways, back to the video. My everyday carry for my backpack, and this backpack... I have another small camel pack that I carry sometimes, but I like carrying this backpack because it actually only weighs a pound empty, and it can easily be broken down into my hiking pack, all the stuff in it, and then this can be folded up and stuffed in my hiking pack. My camel pack is a little too stiff and too sturdy to fold up into my hiking pack, so it adds a little bit of weight and a little bit of bulk when I only want to carry one bag. So that's why I carry this. Uh, it's a flash 
from REI, like I said, it weighs under a pound. I don't really like the system. for These are really thin straps. It's how they take a lot of weight out of there, and there's no backing. But it dries really quick when it gets wet, and it does a, does, does a pretty good job. So like I said, I got the water bottle here. I guess we'll start here. There's tons of stuff in here. I, I, I have small, a light asthma, uh, asthma, so I do carry an inhaler always on me, on me. But this here, this here is the main kit. Everything else that's in my backpack might be computer related or my phone stuff. And, uh, and I have a couple big items that I haven't carried. This, everything in here I've carried pretty much for the last 10 years though. Every single day. I do not go without it, okay? Um, here's an item I've added the last couple years. I do carry a life straw pretty much all the time on me now. I think it's pretty important. They only weigh two ounces, and they are one of the best uh, filtering systems that doesn't involve, you know, distilling the water and doesn't involve boiling the water. I've drank out of some pretty nasty water with a life straw, and, you know, dirtier the water is, uh, the longevity of this thing isn't going to be quite as long. Uh, it'll get clogged up, and sometimes, you know, I'll put that the handkerchief over the bottom of this before I start drinking, and that'll kind of filter it out so you don't get so much stuff in here. But you can do 300, uh, 260 gallons through this thing usually before they start getting clogged up, which is enough water for one man for about eight or nine months. So carrying a life straw for two ounces, I think, is... A no-brainer. So here is the actual kit. This is my everyday carry. If I'm switching backpacks or doing anything, this kit comes with me, okay? It has another handkerchief. Uh, well, these are usually in the package. Uh, we'll get to these in a second. They're just a couple beef rum noodle packages. No, uh, no noodles. Uh, I've got a uh, safety light, crack light. It's a little chemical glow stick. You crack, everybody's seen those. I always carry at least one of those because uh, when you're in the pitch dark, those actually add quite a bit of light to the scene. Uh, a little bit of paracord, there's probably more in here. Uh, well, this is attached to the actual bag, but here's the fire steel. And these are the ones that I give away on the uh, channel, and this is also one that I sell on the site. And sometimes they'll have different handles, but I do prefer to just have a little bit of duct tape on it, or this is Gorilla Tape. It burns really good if you need to extend a fire, and uh, it holds this handle on there pretty darn good. Uh, that, I don't have a striker on there. I do expect myself to always have a knife, and there's another couple razor blades in here, and you can pretty much strike a ferro rod with anything. A sharp rock or a piece of glass works really good, so I'm never worried about not having something to strike it with. Now, this outside bag I've only la I've only added in the last couple of years because it is a bag that we sell our survival kits on uh, UncleDaveUltralightGear.com. Uh, there's a couple things floating around in here. I've got um, some pretty heavy duty zip ties, and this is so if uh, you know you're in a situation where. Um, you have to lash something up real quick and you want it to be strong, that'll work. Plus, uh, if you have to uh, tie someone up because you've gotten into some trouble with them or they, uh, you know, some escape and some evade and, you know, sometimes you have to buckle some people's hands behind them until the cops get there so you don't have to deal with them so much, you know. You don't have to stand one foot on their chest. We've got... Uh, a survival blanket, I believe there's another one in there, I've added this extra one because having two of these Mylar survival blankets is really what you need. So that way you can put one around you kind of if you need to or underneath you and then you can also put one as a shield to reflect your fire. And uh, all you guys who are really into bushcraft have seen these used and know how, uh, how they can really work best if you're using them to reflect heat back down on you. So there's one of those. Now let's open this thing up. This is what I've actually carried since high school. This has been my kit. I've traveled all over the country. Um, I take the train. I take uh, buses. Uh, I, I'm, I've had a fear of flying my whole life, so I don't fly. 
Um, I've traveled across country over uh, 22 times by train or by ground, on the ground. So uh, I always take this with me regardless... Um, Regardless of what the rules are, you know, if uh, if there's stuff in this kit that they say I can't take on the train, I don't care. I'll either not take the train or this kit's coming with me, but they never check my stuff, so I always just have this in here. So this this a lighter, this a little lighter case. It's probably from the 80s, made by Levi's actually, which is interesting. Uh, and then this is a lighter case with a bic, and I put it upside down to kind of help waterproof the whole situation here. So there's always a lighter. It's a good idea to have a lighter because, you know... A lighter is a uh, quick flame and makes it easy to start fires. So if you have a lighter that you can use for a little while, that's good. And uh, a lighter won't last forever, so I do recommend you having a ferro rod. Uh, of course, this is a, a water-resistant stuff sack. It's probably just made by Outdoor, the outdoor company uh, that Walmart carries. Now, in this plastic bag is where it's all at, okay? You take this plastic bag out, and here we go. This right here is a spool of fishing line, and it's some of that um, new, really light, twisted line. Uh, it's really light and easy to use, but with a jig on this, I mean, this is enough. This is enough line you're going to be able to uh, do any kind of fishing you need to. So I like to keep that in here. Uh, this is a bar of soap, and it has just some cordage on it which uh, this cordage is, is big enough and strong enough that I can use it to make friction fire if I need to, but it's just for everything, building a shelter and doing whatever I need. I also keep a little bit of uh, 550 cord in there. I try to keep enough that I can make a friction fire. Um, like I said, another, another survival mylar blanket. Uh, a couple band-aids are pretty much useless. Uh, any cut that you have that's the size that you would need a band-aid for it, you're pretty much not going to need. But, uh, you know, you get a big gash on your finger, you close it up with some super glue, and then put a band-aid over it so you're not so prone to infection. Uh, we got this here. It's my fire kit. These are cotton balls soaked in uh, paraffin wax, a little bit of uh, a little tea light, and then an Uncle Dave's uh, emergency stove. These are the emergency mini stoves made by me, uh, original design, and then a little bit of uh, steel wool. Um, we've got this here, which I don't know, I just put this in my kit lately, but this stuff really does help. This is uh, one of those Weber fuel cubes that's been broken up, and these things really do work well. They'll take a spark. spark. If you fluff them up, they'll take a spark from... Uh, from a ferro rod, and they're completely waterproof. You can put them in water and then take them out and then break them up and then they'll immediately light. So I do like having these, but uh, they smell kind of kerosene and I don't know, sometimes I think that they shouldn't be in there. But uh, here's a little tampon. Uh, these are good actually because they're uh, disinfected, they're always clean as long as they're still uh, in an unpunctured wrapper. Um, if you're ever hiking or lost with a female, and you know it's that time of the month, you're going to be glad you brought this thing because uh, this will keep her cool for at least another eight hours, you know. She won't be freaking out too bad because you had this. But also what these really work great for is if you get a large cut, you can stuff this in the cut and they expand so much and take up so much water that if you put pressure on this, this can really stop bleeding for you or at least slow it down until you can get out of the woods. So I always carry one of those in there. Now this kit, as you can see there's a hook here, but this is just a spoon jig. Uh, these work really good, especially in salmon country and places where you have uh, large fish run in the river. I keep this little fly thing. This thing works really good for trout just about anywhere you are. And this right here has a hulu grub, which works really good for bass anywhere in Maine. There's a, a little thing full of uh, eagle claw that probably... Uh, medium-sized hooks with leaders and plus there's a couple more flies and a couple more jigs in there and uh, and a bobber and a couple of flies that look like caterpillars this kit right here will catch fish just about anywhere in the uh, in the world uh, I keep a couple five dollar bills folded up so I have a little bit of extra money I do keep this half and half uh, a tea mix because you know 
when you're stuck out in the wilderness for a long time, it's nice to have a, a, a warm cup of tea or even something flavored. This actually isn't warm tea. This is half and half lemon and iced tea. This really is good, you know. I mean, it's just to add something. It's, uh, it's mostly for mental, you know. When you're out there and you're thinking, okay, uh, we're definitely spending the night out here. How about I just relax, have something good to drink, and uh, chill out? And I also keep a pack of hot cocoa in here usually because that's really nice to have a hot drink and uh, sometimes some tea. But uh, I was just on a trip not too long ago, and I used those things out of this kit. And then we'll bring it back to the beef flavored. This is just for calories, and uh, it gives you some salt in your system. It keeps you going. But, you know, if you've been hiking all day and you've realized you're going to sleep in the bush for the night on accident, well, it's nice to be able to cook up a little, uh, a little beef soup. You can easily add um, a cattail um, root to this. You can add all kinds of wild edibles to this and make yourself an actual soup or you can just drink the warm broth which will uh, warm your body temperature up before you go to bed and uh, make you feel a little more human. Uh, I have one 40 round uh, 40 Smith & Western. This is what goes in my um, pistol and I just have this. Is It's, you know, your gun doesn't work without ammo, so it's nice having an extra bullet lying around here and there. And then you come to this little pan that everything's on. I keep it uh, a piece of aluminum attached to the bottom here, just like that, because aluminum foil can really help you, really help you out. And, uh, and then I keep this little pot. This pot is really small because it was actually a lid. It was actually the lid pot to one of my hiking setups back in the day before I got my billy pot. This is what I was using was this and, and another pot that goes on top of uh, on bottom of it. But this is a really small, great size pan to have, and uh, the handle pops off like that, you know. And this whole kit, I mean, is probably just over a pound or about a pound. And once you have this pot in there with it. It's like you can boil water, you can warm up water to drink, you can cook some food, cook anything that you, you find or you maybe catch a trap. That pot really is what makes, that's the base of my kit. Always have a pot. It's like look at how small it is. This little thing fits on your belt loop. You can put this on your belt loop. It's a molly setup. You can put it on your molly gear if you carry a loadout vest or something in extreme times. But you can put this, uh, put that right on your belt loop with your knife and your pistol and you really don't even need the backpack because all this stuff with a knife and a pistol is all you really need to have pretty comfortable night outside in the bush at least if you at least if you're trained properly i know i can spend the night in the bush with this this kit right here i can spend three or four nights in the bush with this kit with no problem especially if i start getting my fish on and uh, get some trapping going I can spend quite a long time with just this kid out in the bush, you know, uh, your, emer your two emergency blankets and that pot right there, and then your fire starting equipment, really, that's, what, that's where the gold is in this kit. So, this is stuff I carry every single day. My, uh, my backpack here, it also has some electronic stuff. I like to keep uh, some memory cards and stuff like that for uh, data transfer. Uh, this is uh, the more we're giving away in the competition, uh, in the giveaway right now, but I do know, uh, I do usually carry a more classic, my, uh, the one I, my, my backup knife right now is actually up in my hiking pack upstairs right now, and uh, for some reason I took it out of there just because I'm carrying around the one, the one that I'm giving away in the jaw right now. So that's pretty much my everyday carry. Um, this video is already wicked long. Sorry about that. I don't really need to go into everything too much. I've showed you what I carry. I just wanted you guys to see what my EDC is. And this is my everyday carry. I carry this stuff every single day. When I wake up in the morning, I put my knife on, put my boots on, put my gun on, and then make sure I have my backpack before I leave the, leave the house. This stuff may be a little too much. Um, you may think I'm carrying far too much every single day. Maybe you don't. But uh, think about everything I have here. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned, yeah, in this rope is a bar of soap. 
because cleanliness is next to godliness and it is a good idea to keep yourself clean when you're out there It also keep your morale up uh, if you're sitting out there covered in mud cold it's raining and you don't have the stuff it's gonna be hard to get through a couple nights you know your uh, your brain's gonna break down on you so um, I've seen good ideas on uh, keeping pictures of loved ones and stuff to give you encourage encouragement to get out and to keep on going and keep on pushing. That's a good idea. I don't really need that stuff. Um, I've trained a lot in the woods, though. I've spent lots of time out there by myself. If I'm stuck out in the wild for a couple days by myself, I'm pretty much used to it already. It's all about how much training you have and how much time you spend doing this. But uh, that's my EDC, my everyday carry. I carry it every day, like I said. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share this video, rate, comment. Let's start a discussion. I'm interested in talking. Everybody, uh, everybody has an EDC on uh, YouTube nowadays. I know you guys all have uh, great information about this particular subject. And please comment. And let's talk about it. Thanks for watching our videos. Thanks for the support. Uncle Dave, DC's Adventures, signing out.